Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, as the nice lady told you, my name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety. I'm so thrilled to welcome you to the SAG Foundation Conversation with Felicity Jones. Uh, a professional actor since the age of 11, she has emerged as one of the most exciting actresses working today with roles in films like The Invisible Woman and Like Crazy. Still, I don't think any of her previous screen work could have really prepared us for her stunning turn as Jane Hawking in The Theory of Everything. Please welcome Felicity Jones. Hello, hello, how are you? Oh, sorry, I boost you. <laughs> Walk past you. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for being here and congratulations on, you're really in a run of great movies, year after oh, year. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been especially this year, it's, it's, it's felt really good. We only finished the film in, when did we finish it? November, so it's all happened quite quickly with the edit and and now it's, it's amazing. yeah, and then going to Toronto, and now it's in the world. So it's up to you guys, <laughs> what you make of it. But yeah, it's been pretty intense. Uh, so we're going to get to the theory of everything, but I actually want to go back and start at the beginning. Uh, how did you first become interested in being an actor? I know you had performers in your family. Well, yes. It. Uh, my uncle um, is an actor, Michael Hadley, and it started really going to see his plays. He he does a lot of theatre in in London. Um, and so I went to see, he did a production of um, Ibsen, The Lady from the Sea, with, with Alex Kingston, who's a fabulous British um, actress. And I just, I just got that feeling, you know, when you're sitting in the audience and you sort of have a tingle and you think, I want to be on that stage one day, one day, I'd love to do that. And, and I think it was, um, it was just growing up and, and, and seeing plays, that's how it started. And then I started watching, you know, I'd go and see to go to the cinema and my my mum's very passionate about film and theatre and she'd take my brother and I there was like a big multiplex it was about an hour from our house so we'd all drive to go and see like the latest Mel Gibson film or you know or Tom Cruise and, and Nicole Kidman so and I remember I used to love just in the car on the way back chatting about the film with my family and and so it came very much from just a natural um, love for, for the for film and theatre and, and that world now, how old were you when you were going to Ibsen plays? Oh, Ibsen, when I was five. No. <laughs> um, that was, uh, I, I mean, I didn't really know what was going on, but I sort I of... I still don't. I, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I just love, I just remember the lighting being really beautiful. And it's that excitement you get just before the play is about to start. And I, I just remember that very vividly. And your parents actually encouraged an acting career? Um, they, I mean, I grew up with my mother and she was always just, my, both my brother and I, she just said, you know, do what you, she gave us freedom, which is the best thing that you can give a, a, a child, you know, I d it was, do, you, the world is yours, so, so make the most of it, so um, I, she just encouraged whatever was, was natural to us and what was instinctive, and, and I actually went to a great um, youth group. Um, in Birmingham where I grew up and, and that's, that was just, uh, that's where it all started really and I had a great tutor, teacher there called Colin Edwards and you know those people that you meet when you're a young kid but they don't treat you like a young kid, they treat you with, um, like an adult and, and take you seriously even if you're, you know, 11 or 12 and, and he was an amazing mentor for, for many of us and so that's where I, I started acting professionally. Is it a British thing where parents are okay with their kids being actors? Because that is not the case in America. Um, I, I think, I think my, my mother just felt, you know, jobs, everything's so unreliable now. You know, back, I mean, I'm sure back in the 50s, it was like, don't be an actor. That's the worst thing you can do, you know, because it was known for its instability. But I think more and more, any job you choose, is, is, it's not for life anymore. Mm. Um, so, uh, so I, I never felt there was that you know there wasn't a, a limitation on it. I mean, I went, I did go to university and I and I studied, and I guess somewhere in the back of my head I thought it's good to have something to fall back on. But then I did an English literature degree, which gives you nothing <laughs> to fall back on. So, um, <laughs> uh, but it was it was a you know a good three years and met some interesting people and, and had some time where I, I, w I wasn't working so much. Now, because you did start so young, uh, were you thinking of it as a career or were you just having fun? 
Yeah, I, I didn't, um, I don't think when you're younger, you don't think of it as in career terms. You know, it was something I enjoyed doing. And I, I was in like children's television and a, a children's TV drama called The Treasure Seekers. So I was with lots of other kids running around and, you know, we'd sort of be going and playing on a swing and then they'd be like, you need to come and do this scene. And we'd be like, we'll be 10 minutes. We've just got to finish this game or something. So it was very, it was in a quite relaxed way. It was only actually when I went to university and, and started auditioning for plays and getting turned down and getting really upset about it that I thought, oh, this is very, this is something I take very seriously. And, and um, it was from that point, um, almost stepping away from the acting and, and doing something more academic, then I suddenly thought, actually, this has got hold of me. I, I want to, I'm going to jump off the diving board uh, into the deep end and, and see how it goes. I was actually curious, curious about stepping away because that's another very foreign concept to uh, American actors. But you, uh, the, one of the shows you were on, The Worst Witch, yes, you yeah. left it. Well, that was I did. I did the first series, and then the um, I, can't, I can't. Then the second series, um, I think I was there was a I was going on holiday with my family or something, and and was was hoping to go with them. So I so I didn't so I didn't do that second series. But I had great fun doing it. I learned how to you know, pretend to ride a broomstick, which is very useful for, <laughs> for, for future life. Um, but I, yeah, I had a great time doing that, that first series. And then I think you also took a year off before school and you were working during that time, but again, you w chose to go back to school. I did, yeah. I mean, it's quite a popular thing in England to take a gap year. I don't know if people, if it's so popular here, but, um, and I, I traveled for a bit and then I did, I, um, actually that's when I, that was when I was 18 and I signed with my agent, my British agent, who I'm still with now. We've been together 12 years. Um, and I did a, t a TV series for the BBC called Servants. And then went back to school after that? And then I, I went to school for three years. Um, and then um, whilst I was at school, I was doing a radio soap. Uh, called The Archers, which is very well known in England, but means nothing here, which is about, which is a soap that's been going for 50 years, which is about farming. Um, but everyone has it on in their kitchens. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a um, sort of British institution. Uh, and, then, and then after I finished university, that's when I, I um, decided to just give it a go and go full time for the acting. Uh, we actually have an audience question from Ken who wanted to know about, uh, at the start of your career, did you land an agent right away, or did it take a few agencies before you found a good one? Um, well, I actually, well, both my agents, I, I met really early on. I met my English agent when I was 18, and um, and I've loved working with her, and, and have never felt any need to, to for change, and um, I think they probably find it hard with me sometimes. I can be very... Uh, difficult to track down sometimes and um, and uh, yeah and it's you you just build a relationship with someone and and similarly with my American agent I signed with him when I first came to the States which was to do a film called Light Crazy in 2011 and um, and and just you know it's when you find someone that you have a good relationship with and, and I've stayed with him ever since uh, we had another question, oh, from a mystery person who didn't leave a name uh, <laughs> that was actually question. asking about your process, if you have a specific technique like Meisner or Strasberg, I don't know if you um, studied that at university. God, do you know what, because I didn't go to drama school, I've literally just learn on seeing other people and, and you call it, a pro I mean, I can't even call it a process. It's not, it's just, you just sort of, it's, it's trial and error really. And, and, and seeing things, seeing other ways of working. I mean, the one thing that I have learned is I love to have time uh, to prepare for a role and, um, and working in the theater. I found if possible, which isn't always possible to have rehearsal and just, cause I, I, I mean, everyone must find this, it's that thing it's when you go into an audition or something and just you're, you're so self-conscious and nervous that everything that comes out of your mouth is just the wrong thing and it just feels horrible. And, and so I feel the more time that you have before you get to the stage or you get to the set to just make mistakes really and, and, and um, try things out and make a fool of yourself, then when you come to the performance time, you can be there 100% on it because you've had that time to to get used to the role and the words and, and, um, and immerse yourself in it. I was actually going to ask about auditions because starting um, as a child, you probably, um, you know, ignorance is sort of bliss. 
uh, or did you take the rejection hard, or did it become difficult once you were sort of once you wanted it more? Oh, I, I mean, it's just phenomenal how many times you get rejected, <laughs> and it's funny because my friends, you know, a lot of my friends from university are not in in the business, and you know, they'll go to maybe like two job interviews a year, and then they'll get really upset if they don't go, get one. I'm like, try doing like. 25 a month and getting like and getting a feedback and it's funny getting feedback where there's always just something you're not this enough you're not that enough you're not you know and if you internalize that too much you'd go crazy I think as everyone must find you develop like actors develop thick skins yeah hard skins on the outside but trying to keep the vulnerability on the inside that that seems to me to be the to be the challenge and what sort of career did you envision for yourself? Did you want to do mainly theatre? Did you always want to do TV and film? Um, well, I guess I feel very comfortable on a, on a film set or a TV set because that's where, you know, I, I've, I've spent time as a child there. So I do, I feel very at home with it. I like the, you know, their, their military precision, the, the way a film set runs. I, I, I do like that. But then at the same time, doing theatre is, um, I mean, it's so nerve-wracking. That, that's, that's the hardest thing, is just before you go on stage, you're like, why am I doing this to myself? This, there are, this is just, this is so painful, but once you're out, when, <laughs> does anyone know that feeling? Like, just before, and you're like, oh, this feels terrible, I'm going to forget all my lines. And then as soon as you're on the stage, you're like, okay, I know what I'm doing, it's fine. Um, so I, I, like, I like moving between, between everything, actually. If it's good, if it's good words, that you get to say good writing, and an interesting character. I think it doesn't matter what, what medium it's in. Uh, I know on British TV you did a number of costume dramas like Brideshead Revisited and uh, I believe, was it Northanger Abbey? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, are those sort of rites of passage for every British actor? <laughs> I know, we all have to wear a wig yes. at some point. And a corset. <laughs> and a corset, yes. exactly. Um, it is. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know why that's particularly British. I think, I guess there's a, there's a love of I mean, the history and, and I, I guess the literature is a big part of the culture, so it feels natural to adapt it. Um, but actually it was interesting with theory, both Eddie and I, in some ways we, we wanted to be careful about it being set, being co a costume drama, mm -hmm. you know, we wanted it not to feel like it was um, stodgy or, 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 or too kind of... You know, because sometimes they can be a bit sort of boring. Um, so we just we wanted to try and bring some freshness and make sure, even if you're playing someone in the past, you still have the same impulses and people. I don't think people's characters change that much. It's just you know, it's just the the time changes and the outfits change, but the impulses are the same. That's why they keep doing modern updates of Jane Austen. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> sh yeah. Well, she just is is feels so contemporary. Yeah, the character the character types are, are the same. I sort of imagine, I don't know if you're familiar with our series, Law and Order, yes, but that's yes. how I think of uh, British actors. Everyone has to do a costume drama. I, I, exactly. Yeah. They're sort of, um, yeah, as you say, right, rites of passage, definitely. Uh, but you get to have guns. <laughs> which is a bit, <laughs> which seems, we have like horses. Yeah. Which I think you fun. win. <laughs> Um, you mentioned Like Crazy, and like yeah. so many people, I think that was where I first really took notice of you in that movie. Uh, and I know you won the Empire Award, the Gotham Award, and a special prize at Sundance. Uh, really an amazing performance. How did the role find its way to you, and, and did you know you were onto something special? Um, I, well I had, I was sent the script just th through um, Warren Zavala, who's my, my agent in the US. and. And it was just one of those things. I just read it, and I just thought it was so honest, and it was, it wasn't um, cliched, or it just felt very truthful. The, the characters, the writing, it felt like it was coming, and it had been written by um, Drake Doremus and um, and Ben York Jones, and and a lot of it was based on Drake's real experience, so it had that authenticity to it, which um, which I just actually with that script, which doesn't happen all the time, I just felt a, an impulse towards it. I did. I just you know. Want, wanted to wanted to be a part of it and then spoke to Drake on the phone and we ended up talking about Lars von Trier or something and how much <laughs> we both liked to his work and and he just said make a tape and and then I, I I just yeah took a gamble really and 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 made this tape and you don't really expect you make these tapes oh god these bloody tapes um <laughs> <does every laughs> you make them and then you send them off and like most of the time you don't ever hear anything back um but but luckily, with <laughs> it's true. Though, isn't it? 
like, where is this tape going? It just goes like into the ether. Um, Tripped up on YouTube and that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, but he, yeah, he got back and said, "I'd love you to to fly out and let's let's make it." So it was, um, it was a very, yeah, it was a very, um, it was a special process, special time. He offered you the role off of the tape. Off the tape, yeah, yeah. which <laughs> yeah, which was very brave of him. Yeah, the first time I actually met him was just coming through the airport. I mean, because there was no no money involved in in making it. It was a very small budget, and so Drake picked me up at the airport. And then we just sort of looked at each other like, oh my God, right, let's just do this, you know, just like, um, and it was, yeah, it was very, it felt very instinctive and, and impulsive, which I like it when people, you know, act on their instincts and, because sometimes you're left waiting for weeks before you hear anything and, and there's something nice about someone just knowing straight away that they, So you didn't even right. have a chemistry test with Anton Yelchin? No, no. When did you first meet? He, I met, I actually met him in... Um, Santa Monica, in he was sitting at the bar having a tequila um, <laughs> at a Mexican restaurant, and that was the first time I met him. And then we just started, the three of us just started talking about the, the film, and, and that's an, and formed a friendship between the three of us, and it went from there. Now, you mentioned there was a script, and I was under the impression that it, it was largely improvised or you contributed to the script. Yes. So what did he send you originally? So it was basically, it's a, a normal script, but without the dialogue. So you have all the stage directions. Um, it's a treatment, really. And it's a bit, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, I understand, works in the same way. So you do it a lot with comedy, you know, where you have this is X walks in and talks to Y, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then you, on the day, bring the, bring the dialogue and, and bring the words. Um, which is, yeah, which is sort of like uh, extremely frightening at first, uh, but then after uh, you start to find the right words. I don't often think actors have a good sense of, of dialogue, actually, because you, you become, you know, you own that character, don't you? So you feel like you, you can find the right language for them. So what did you do for the audition? Did you, you I don't want to say you wrote your own scene, but you performed as the character? So just did three scenes from the script, um, and, uh, and improvised, I think one of them was when they first met, um, my character and Anton's character, which was in my kitchen in East London. Um, and then another scene, which was right, the very last scene of the film, which had no dialogue in it. Mm. Um, and then I think one of the middle scenes, and then just set, you know, as everyone does, you're setting up the camera in your, in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, but then you have that thing where you end up if you're in control of it, it's never right. And you're just critical of every single one. And then an, it should take you two hours, but it ends up taking you two days. <laughs> like, just let it go, just send it off. Um, and how long did it take to make the film? I know it was some crazy schedule. It was really far. I think we did it in like four and a half weeks, five weeks. Yeah, really, really, really quick. But I find a lot now that films are really fast. You know, back, I mean, I believe back in the day people would spend you know, like six months making a movie, but that, unless you're doing a massive sort of um, studio movie, mm -hmm. that doesn't really happen for drama. So was this your first American film? It, um, I'd done, it was my first film shot in the, in the States. I'd done The Tempest with Helen Mirren and Julie Taymor, uh, which is when I got my SAG card. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> very <laughs> proud moment. <laughs> um, so that, and that was a few years before, but Like Crazy was the first film I shot in the US. And how did you get The Tempest? I mean, that's, that's an intimidating lineup. Oh yeah, that was, that was I'm doing Shakespeare on, on screen is, um, is not for the faint-hearted, definitely. <laughs> um, but uh, that was, again, auditioning in London um, and, and meeting Julie, and, and it went from there, really. So had you ever been to America before shooting Like Crazy? Um, I'd never, had I been, I'd been to LA, I'd been to LA, yes. Um, so I learned how to drive in LA, because my friend, one of my best friends, taught me how to drive. <laughs> um, just when, you know, I was driving around and going to lots of meetings and auditions, and so I had spent time here before, before filming it. But it was the first time I'd, I'd shot something. I mean, did you really, uh, were you familiar with the Sundance Film Festival? Did you know yes, what to expect yeah. or what a deal it was? I did. I mean, it's so Robert Redford, it's, yeah, I mean, it's so famous. Yeah. And, and the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was just brilliant, brilliant film. So, so yeah, I, I, I knew of it, knew it very well, actually. Never uh, thought I'd be there. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's very famous in England. 
Well, not only there, but you know, with this movie that really took the festival by storm. And I always like to think of it as the movie where the guy chooses you over Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> that, that looks nice on a it resume. It would never happen in any <laughs> situation. <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, it, did it really launch your Hollywood career? Is it fair to say? Um, oh gosh, I don't know. It's always hard. You can't, it's hard for you as the actor to say, you know, it sounds a bit cheesy if you start talking about your own launch or, you know. Um, <laughs> this is when I was launched. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, I, I, personally, it was, a, it was a moment when I felt like I... You know, I, I was playing um, a com complicated, interesting female character, and it, when it was a dramatic character, and and where I really uh, I loved the way we worked, and 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 you know, felt like you um, could be proud of something. Mm -hmm. that, that that's what it felt like personally. But people certainly took notice, and I don't just mean me. I mean, is that how you got your American? You'd said earlier. That was how you got your American agent. Did you start taking meetings? Yes, doing the exactly. Whole came from um, came from like crazy. Yeah, it was um, it was it was definitely a moment that you know I'll, I'll um, look probably look back on and go that was definitely a time when I just started coming out to the U.S. more from from being much more London based before then. Did anything uh, come from it immediately, or because I know you reunited with Drake to do another movie? Yes. Shortly thereafter. Um, did it straight after? Yeah. I actually, I had a bit of time where I didn't, I think it was a few months where I just, where I wasn't, was, wasn't working and then, um, and just trying, you know, again, going and meeting and trying to get work. Um, and then uh, the project that came up after that, I think was the, I'm trying to think now, The Invisible Woman. It was Invisible Woman. Um, which was uh, m many months later, actually, after making Like Crazy. Um, and, and that, that was with uh, Ray Fiennes, who directed it and, and was in it. So he's not only your scene partner, but he's your boss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the process like lending that role and, and, you know, doing your scene partner also being your director? Yeah, I mean, I'd never done it before. It was, um, well, what was extraordinary was just seeing him bounce in and out of it, you know, being behind the camera and being Rafe, and then suddenly I'd see is Charles Dickens next to me. Um, and and that, that taught me a lot, and I, and I, like, I like his approach. I, I really learned from that, this thing of, um, uh, of, no, of being able to go in and out of character. You know, I've often had a, maybe a more, slightly more um, method is too strong a word, a method approach where you, you know, you knit yourself with the character, where it was interesting to see Rafe, to see that, that jump. And so it was something that I wanted to um, wanted to, to to explore a different style of acting in a way where you do um, you find character through wigs and I'd never worn a wig for anything before really? you know and, and using prosthetics and and in a challenge in a different way something that was a lot less naturalistic than than like crazy. Was it also your first time playing a real life person? It was, yes, it was. She, she said, she's dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have the worry of the person coming to see the film, oh, yeah. which, oh, <laughs> um, but it, but it does feel like it, it is a, it is a responsibility, and you can, you just whether they're dead or alive, sort of doesn't matter. You, you, you're taking someone's intimate life, and you're, you're putting it out into the world, so you feel very uh, careful about that and, and protective of that person, and um, and you you do take it home with you at the end of the day, or you know it takes it takes a few months for you to refind you know um, it, it lives with you that person when they're, when they're alive. Uh, had you met Rafe before working on this film? I imagine there's like a club where all, like, all the British actors hang out. I don't know if we all know each other. <laughs> we all have like family parties <laughs> together. Um, I hadn't, no, I, I mean, I'd just seen him in Schindler's List and loved, loved seeing his work and, and been a fan, really. Um, so this was the first time I was was working with him. Uh, and he's very, very specific. He's amazing. He's, he's a very... Um, sort of strong filmmaker, has a very clear idea of how he wants the set, everything is, and, and I love that about the film, he, he sees everything like a picture. It's really like a beautiful painting. Um, so he has a very strong idea of what, of what he wants, um, which, which was a different muscle and very different from working with someone like Drake, where it's a little bit more free form. 
So how did he cast you? Was it a meeting or did you audition? We, we met in, um, in L.A. in uh, the L'Hermitage, the, the hotel. Oh, I never learned how to pronounce which that Which is apparently where <laughs> loads of musicians stay, apparently, <laughs> which made us feel very hip and cool. Um, and uh, met, and, and again, just, just chatting about the, the role and, and the script. And, and, um, and, and, and I think working out, you know, can you have an open, honest dialogue with that person? Mm -hmm. and, and are we on the same wavelength? And um, he was doing, actually, we, were talk, we talked about The Tempest a lot. I remember him reciting some of it because he was doing it in London. He was playing Prospero at the time. Wow. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, so we talked about that. And then I went to audition b back in London and auditioned with him. Yeah, I love that uh, the two of you met in Los Angeles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. It's country. our second home, you know. <laughs> um, I know last year you also jumped into the big budget action franchise world with Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, what was it like, you know, going from these small independent movies to something where I imagine, you know, the craft service budget is probably uh, yeah, bigger yeah. than like crazy. Well, the same as my fee, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, uh, I mean, just the sets are huge. It's, li it's more like doing a play, weirdly. Because you have this, it takes you like 10 minutes to get from one side to the other. And you know, the other actor, you're sort of like, hello, calling, like doing your scenes miles away from them, which I'm not used to. So I'm used to being in a tiny room, you know, with a camera person, like right, right next to you. <laughs> so that's my mic. Uh, so it was, it was just a different, it was nice to do something completely different, yeah. a diff very different um, experience. But I, I had a great time doing it. Uh, which I guess brings us to the theory of everything. Um, how did this part come to you? I know there was a lot of competition for this role. Yeah, well, there's always competition. <laughs> it's like everything. There's always sort of a, a number of great actors, you know, who you're, you're competing against. Um, but this, uh, again, this started with uh, being sent the script and, and lo just loving Jane Hawking. I just thought she was so layered and nuanced and s strong, but not like, you know, now everyone's obsessed with women being tough, but she wasn't just tough. She's tough and vulnerable. Like you, you want the, the, the contrast, you want complexity. And it felt like here was a character where you could um, you could find lots of interesting nuance with uh, so so that was my first impulse and I liked it that it, she was a woman who has an affair um, I thought that was very interesting and unusual and a complicated situation because she also had this enormous love for for Stephen they did for each other so I, I like it when stories aren't uh, too obvious or when they're telling you something new is is always interesting um, and then I met James Marsh who directed Man on Wire. Um, the documentary and um, and another film called Shadow Dancer which mm -hmm. Andrea Riseborough was in and so I'd seen how he just dealt with a female character so beautifully and 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 um, and, and wanted to go and, impre and impress him <laughs> basically after seeing his films and, and met and, and chatted with him and we talked about and love the idea that the film wasn't just about you know it wasn't just a domestic story a micro it was also about bigger things, about what does it mean to be here and what the hell is, what are we doing here? You know, all those, it had a sort of macro level to it. Um, so that appealed and, and after talking, he said, come to London and, and audition. So I, um, I went and as ever, like, you know, nervously uh, went and met him and Eddie and um, Eddie had already been cast at that point. So uh, we just had a rehearsal room in London and and again, just d did the scenes. But James is a very sensitive director. He's very, um, he's so kind to you, which seems obvious because you think directors should be kind, but they're not always <laughs> kind. <laughs> you know, he made you feel very uh, supported. And, um, and I just got such a nice feeling in that room with the three of us. It, it felt like we could, we could really interrogate these people and, and be brave with it and, and hopefully not fall into cliche or, um, or, or do anything that had, you know was too sort of recycled. And I'm sorry to ask, but uh, had you met Eddie before? Because your chemistry is fantastic. Um, I well, we'd seen. We actually both worked with a theatre director in London, Michael Grandage, on different plays. But we'd seen each other's work, and then we'd done that thing where you see the same people in audition after audition, and then you're like, did you get it? No. 
did you know? Uh, and then you move on to the next one, you know. So we'd, we'd, we'd grown up together in, in a way in a, through our 20s, uh, but, but this was the first time we, we actually properly worked together. But there'd been a lot of mutual respect for each other and, and have very similar ways of working, which was weird, you know, like to do lots of takes, love lots of rehearsal time. Um, probably overthink things too much, and uh, so it was. Um, it was. A, it was a weird working with someone who you, you've worked separately, but you've developed a similar way of working. And this time you're playing a real person, but she is alive. Uh, what was the pressure of that like? I mean, it is. It's. It's that, and, and she's someone who I c care very deeply about, and. Um, and you, yeah, you do, you sort of, your shoulders get higher and higher throughout shooting and, you know, you do sort of, you feel worry that they, they're going to appreciate, it's their life, it's their life, it's like 25 years of someone's existence and they're very bravely putting it out for everyone to see, so you do, you, you, you're careful with them, you know, sometimes, because I went to meet Jane and, and spoke, you know, she was very open, but it's not that thing where you sort of rush in and start asking them, you know, really intimate questions about their, their love life. It's something, I think the key with a real person is you just build trust and respect for each other. And, that, and that's a very gradual process. And, and, you, and what you want is their blessing, really. So they, they trust you that you're, that you're gonna be careful with their, with their life. Was there anything when you met her that you know, ended up changing your perception of the character? that maybe worked its way into the film? Um, oh gosh, lots of things. Yeah, her, just the way she moved. She, her, stuff that you can't get from uh, archive or, or, or the book and her, her spirit. I know that sounds a bit sort of <laughs> airy fairy, but she has, um, she has a lightness in her and a, and, a, and a softness and a gentleness, but also she's, you know, it's, they've, her and Stephen with disability, you meet so much prejudice and, people patronizing you and you see that I could feel like she's built, her strength has built throughout her life and, and she's developed this toughness because she's had to go through some pretty difficult situations. So it was, it was trying to s show that contrast, you know, that, that, um, that, that sensitivity that she has, but also there's, a, you know, there's an army general in her at the same time. Uh, I know Eddie got to meet Stephen. Did you ever meet him? Yes, oh. yeah, we, we both went to meet him and he's, He's, as you'd expect, you know, he is very f phenomenally um, sharp and bright-eyed and, and he has very little, cannot, you know, he's little expression physically, but it all comes through his eyes. Like his eyes light up and he has this huge Cheshire cat grin, um, which must make, take enormous energy, but he... He, he's, he's warm, but he doesn't suffer fools, you know, and I think at first Eddie and I were just sort of gabbling away and just being uh, embarrassed and, and uh, <laughs> uncomfortable and, uh, and he, um, but he, he, once you've spent time with him and again, you just, you, you're just trying to, you're all trying to, you know, in a very quick space of time, build trust for each other and, and, um, and he's been so supportive all the way through. He actually gave us the, his voice. That's right. For the it's film, trademarked apparently. Right? Yes, yeah, and it has a particular resonance. But he watched the film, and the fact that he—I mean—that that means so much that he, you know, he he likes what 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 what's been made about his life. And what was Jane's feedback to you? Oh, she was very. I spoke to her on the phone, and um, she was very. She actually just said thank you to to all of us, and. Um, just said she she liked the performances very much and um, yet yeah, um, actually their daughter Lucy wrote to us and she um, her she had one criticism which was that uh, at the end of the film she has this very sort of um, conservative outfit on and she said that she was a bit more punk rock than, <laughs> than she'd been portrayed in the film. We always so, think we're a bit more punk rock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so true. In your head, you're like, I'm so punk rock, and then you see it, and you're like, I'm not, not at all. <laughs> <That's what laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we actually had a specific question about the movie. I'm, I'm assuming you've all seen it, so I, I hope there's no spoilers uh, from. Aaron, I uh, wanted to know if you could talk about the scene where you tell Stephen, I tried to love you. I feel weird, like I just gave you a line <laughs> reading. Uh, <laughs> how many takes were needed and how much time was spent on that scene? So that scene was, we had a day for that scene actually. I think she says, I, ha I have loved you, I did my best, um, which makes me feel so sad just her say, you know, and, and what, 
So we had a day to shoot it, and it was one of those days where everyone's really tense on set, I think because we knew we had to get to this emotional place. And whenever there's a scene where it says, he cries or she cries, you know in your head for ages, you, you know, on the day, you've got to hit that emotion. <laughs> um, so it's always like sleepless nights before and, and um, you're always just anxious about it. So we, we, what was the best thing we had the day to just take our time with it. Um, but that scene, I feel the hard thing about it for them as characters was in many ways, I felt like they'd broken up with the spelling board scene. Mm -hmm. That's the moment when they're trying so hard to communicate with each other, but there's something's broken. That's when the relationships, I feel that's when it collapsed. And then it takes, it's a few years afterwards before they can actually let go of each other. And that's the hard bit because there's still, there's so much love and that's the pain because it's not that the love has gone, it's just it doesn't work anymore. And that's, that's where all the, the hurt comes from. And that, that was the way I found was the, the way into it was um, they, they need something else. They need something new in their lives. And this is the moment they've got to admit to each other that they're not the best person for each other. And, and yeah, it's, um, but, we, d but it was, it, we did it in, I, I think that took a lot of take. We had lots of time, so we had time to do lots of takes, whereas other scenes it'd be like, the light's going, or we've, got, we've only rented this car and you have to do it in two takes, you know, otherwise they'll take the car away and things like that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so this one was much more, um, was given time, which was greatly, greatly appreciated. You might have kind of answered this, but I have a question from um, Jessica Marshall Gardner. Is that correct? Gardner. Gardner. Well, what's with the eye in the middle of it? <laughs> uh, how do you prepare yourself before a big, important, intense scene, or, or any scene for that matter? Um, I know you have trouble sleeping. <laughs> um, yeah, trouble sleeping. I used to drink lots of red wine, which sounds really weird the night before, because it makes you really teary the next day. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant <laughs> which, is like, which is not good advice, which no, no one should do. Advice, it makes me actually. sound like a crazy alcoholic, which I'm not. <laughs> um, but it just, <laughs> but I don't think that, no, I don't. But I've actually now, I was like, um, but that was in, you know, because it is that thing of, doesn't anyone, everyone try crying in the mirror? Like, it's that one thing where being told you have to cry or like come on single tear single tear I need it now now um, uh, so so that was a technique which I wouldn't recommend because it's not very healthy to be using alcohol to help your performances but um but I just do you know what I actually now tell myself if there is a big emotional moment you have to hit it doesn't matter if you don't hit it and, and maybe you'll find a different emotion. Because sometimes when you're upset, you're not always crying. You're like angry or you're, there's uh, some other element or you're confused or, you know, there's other emotions you can try. So I try and just take the pressure off now and I just say, play the scene. If, if you do, if tears come, then that's the right thing. But if it doesn't, then, then that's okay. So I, I try and just take that, that thing of trying to hit something. I feel like you don't need to do that. Just what happens will happen. Uh, what would you say has been your most difficult role to date? Um, difficult role. Uh, they all feel quite difficult, but um, this uh, this one was this one was felt particularly because because Jane is a living, breathing human being and is um, would be would be seeing the film. Mm -hmm. uh, so question that felt hard. From Victor, wants to know what you would would have done differently if you weren't an actress. If I wasn't an actress, um, well, I loved swimming, so I always wanted to be a swimmer, um, but I don't, uh, yeah, so, and also, actually, originally I was going to study law at university, really? and then I had a teacher who said that maybe English would be better, which I thank her for, in hindsight, because it, I think there's far too much, like, too much reading cases, and it, yeah, it wouldn't have been the right thing, but yeah, so that's originally what I wanted to do, was, was study law. And uh, oh, another anonymous question wants to know how it was different playing a real person opposed to a fictional character. More, more pressure. More pressure. Yeah, <laughs> more. Um, this you have to be more sensitive, I think, more careful. Um, and Jeff Collins gave me a full name. Uh, well, uh, I sort of already asked this first question, but wants to know what kind of project or role are you seeking that you haven't done yet. Um, 
anything with a gun. <laughs> um, you really want to? Yeah. yeah. See, I'm getting really into guns. Or guns. It's from doing all this crying. I'm like, I need some, <laughs> need some aggression. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends what the st what the story is. I would never. I think you can't ever be too narrow focused, especially as. You know, you don't always have lots of choice. It's what it's what comes through, and and what you you hopefully have um, uh, an empathy for for an aspect of the character. So, but I feel like it's all unknown. You you, you um, it depends how you're feeling at that time, and hopefully something comes through that you respond to and want to get your teeth into. So, what is up next for you after this film? Um, so, I am doing a film called A Monster Calls, which is. Directed by Bayona, um, Jay Bona, who directed The Impossible, um, and he's he's fantastic um, as a Spanish director, and so I go out start shooting that in a few weeks, um, and it's called A Monster Calls, uh, with Liam Neeson and Sigourney Weaver and a very talented young uh, boy who's who's only twelve years old. You have to have a gun in this one. Just, so just no, that yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, no guns in this one. I did an action film called Autobahn, where um, I got to punch someone. So I've managed to get rid of some of that, <laughs> that inner aggression. <laughs> so you're working your way up to the gun. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what you do next. I want to thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank and congratulations you. Congratulations again on, a, on another beautiful movie. Oh, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for thank your you great guys. questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.